being a gardener, you know, your hands and your knees, you're digging in the earth, that sort of thing. So you start thinking about what's growing under the earth and the process of making that. So a lot of times I think those first steps in the painting, those are the seeds planted, you know, and then the piece grows to whatever its size it's supposed to be or, or image it's supposed to be. What I'm trying to do is create light-filled spaces with energy in them. I was uh, born in Oklahoma, the youngest of three boys, and both my parents were teachers. And from the time I can remember, I had a pencil in my hand and was drawing. I've known Jim Wade actually since the 1980s. While I didn't know him personally, I knew about his work and I followed his paintings. He uh, is never afraid to experiment and to change and grow and take those risks. Any big show that focused on the Southwest, he was in it. He was considered one of the top 10 and remains so today. Where is that one brush, that clumsy old brush I use? He wakes up and the first thing he does is wants to go out to the studio. He works, you know, morning, afternoon, night, and his approach to it too, you know, always, he, he loves ours. It's inspiring. I've been familiar with Jim Way's art for over 40 years. It's hard to be in Tucson and not be familiar with his work. I would go to auctions at places like Dinnerware Gallery and Tucson Museum of Art, and he was always generous in donating a piece to whatever fundraiser, and that's when I first became familiar with his work. He has his own completely unique style and approach to color, and of course you know he's in the Metropolitan Museum and other pretty major museums. I had a cousin who was taking art classes, and so he taught me, uh, gave me some lessons when I was in grade school, but it was sort of like how to draw Porky Pig and those kinds of things. When I was 11, we moved to Carlsbad, New Mexico, and then I went up to Albuquerque to go to a much larger school to study painting. I mean, by this time, I, that's what I wanted to do. Graduated there in 1965 and moved to New York and was there for three years and uh, working at a job and also painting when I could on the weekends and nights and that kind of thing. I think I learned as much about art there as I did anywhere. My father's paintings make me feel uh, closer to nature because even though they're not exact representations, he's using how nature's put together constantly. They make me feel like life, the joy of life. Growing up, we would go to openings and see other things. You know, as kids, you're not usually as interested in it, but it grows on you after a while. He liked me being interested, if, especially since when I started doing it, I enjoyed it so much. So he saw that and said, you know, encourage that. When I have the blank canvas, I usually use a big brush and thin down paint with thinner and just get something going on all of it and movement. And generally, sometimes I have an idea I want to explore. Other times it's just the images that start coming up suggest something and then I bring that out. A lot of times it's I'm trying something and then destroying it and trying something else and destroying, you know, it's always creation. Right now I'm exploring just similar concepts, you know, space, light, pattern, uh, growth. It's a beautiful world. Show that and enjoy that as opposed to the negative thing. White, 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 white. I need white. So I'm teaching at Pima College, and we really didn't have a room that was conducive to drawing in. So I started taking students out in the desert right there, and I'm realizing like, whoa, this stuff is incredible. And, I, and that's what sort of got me started with some of the imagery I've been using you know, since then. And uh, so it's very much Sonoran Desert inspired at first. That it turns into an overall interest in nature and processes. And then how can I adapt some of the ideas about processes? Is there any way to make a painting that sort of echoes that or deals with the same kinds of issues? Trying to create a work of art that seems to have a sense of real life to it. 
Ultimately, what you end up seeing is the same from the very beginning of his work, which is the essence of nature, the vibrancy, the sense of crackling of movement and growth. And I love that about him. It's not just a replication of nature or a picture of nature. It's more of the experience of nature. I just find it exuberant and colorful and exciting. I'm interested in forms that just hover right on the edge of recognition so the mind can read them in different ways. I usually start on the paintings with a colored ground. I will use another color on top of it, usually dark or frequently black, and lay it all across it and then scrape away while it's still wet. It's sort of like a reverse drawing or maybe a, you might even call it a, a glorified scratchboard art. <laughs> then when I get that layered, it's sort of like a structure of the bones of the piece or the black, say, overlaying the other undergrip. Then I start changing those black colors into other colors usually, unless it ends up being a black painting, <laughs> which occasionally happens. And I'm always trying to surprise myself and learn new things. I feel like every day I go out there to the studio, and I go almost every day, is I'm trying to learn how to paint. I do not understand the process. I don't question it. That's the way I'm driven. That's the way I'm made.